Um, firstly, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Barry and Hastings for the uh, kind words. I think um, Hastings and I must have been cribbing from the same internet website. <laughs> I think because uh, cooking, I've got the same cooking gags. <laughs> They're slightly different worded. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ian Young, and I have the honour of being Hastings' best man today. Um, <laughs> a great day like this always takes many months of hard work by many people, and therefore, uh, with contributions from many people, and therefore I'd like to thank um, Kathy and uh, uh, Kathy's parents for all their hard work, because I understand they've done quite a great deal of it. So on behalf of everyone here, all of I must confess, I'm very happy to be finally seeing Hast my friends, Hastings and Kathy, uh, finally get married. Uh, but I must say, I do think that uh, Hastings may have taken perhaps a little bit longer than he should have in getting around to proposing. <laughs> <laughs> but in many ways, this is to be expected. I mean, as a top-notch lawyer, I understand delays are... <laughs> 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 right. uh, like me, I'm sure everyone here has noticed how stunning Kathy and her bridesmaids, Katie and Penny, look here today. <laughs> Second time, ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the bridesmaids. Now it's time to tell you about my friend, uh, Mr. John Hastings, you look at guys. Hastings was one of the first people I met when we both, both started at Trinity College in 1996, and we quickly became good friends. Of course, in those days, uh, we were both younger, thinner, and much better looking. <laughs> or at least one of us was. <laughs> Back then, one of the first things that struck me about Hastings was what a wonderful, friendly, and down-to-earth chap he is. However, I would expect nothing less coming from an old Etonian. So after all these years, has Hastings changed? Well, not that much. I mean, perhaps Hastings is slightly more well-rounded. <laughs> when I first met him, but back then, this was due to Mr. Kipling's exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> Nowadays, I understand this has been overtaken by Kathy's amazing baking talent, <laughs> and I hear she makes exceedingly good cupcakes, amusingly decorated. <laughs> it's a good job that Hastings has found a partner who cooks so well, because Hastings himself has always been a bit, sort of, hit and miss in the kitchen. Well, less hit and more miss. Um, our university is cooking mantra was always based on the adage that don't cook anything that can't be cooked in one pot. It doesn't begin with chopped onion. <laughs> the one time we tried to use the grill, we ended up setting our fire blanket on fire. <laughs> and this led to us redecorating our kitchen in a mixture of smoke, ash and grease. <laughs> and we ended up having to use the fire extinguisher to save ourselves and the building. So, Kathy and the burning fire blanket. <laughs> so, Kathy, I do hope that you've got adequate household insurance <laughs> to hopefully cover these future, hopefully isolated occasions. <laughs> Apart from his waistline, <laughs> how else has Hastings changed? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had to describe the Hastings I first met many moons ago, he had a floppy hair, he sat near a fireplace with a woolly jumper and strumming on his guitar. <laughs> Nowadays, the jumper is gone replaced by a smart city suit. Uh, the hair less floppy, and he's upgraded to strolling on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it was at university that Hastings developed a fondness for all for the great outdoors and all things aquatic. For example, Hastings used to help out with the Oxford Adaptive Rowing Club, uh, which used to teach young people with disabilities how to row. Well, whilst Hastings was a very good mentor to many of these young people, he wasn't a very good rower. <laughs> on one occasion, he was crowing a boat down the river uh, when suddenly a coxless pair started coming up the other side quite swiftly and therefore uh, Hastings' cox didn't have time to sort of to turn the boat away so one of our uh, a friend of ours shouted at Hastings quick pull your blade in at this point Hastings got very confused and went what and sort of lifted his oar up in the air he then promptly smacked the first rower <laughs> in the head <laughs> at this point Hastings looked very confused and kept his oar up resulting in him smacking the second row. 
I'm not sure how much rowing Hastings did after that. <laughs> but having to fail... <laughs> I'm sure they're out of hospital. It has been many years. Um, but my point is that uh, having failed to cover himself in glory on the ice, I understand he then moved on to Norfolk Broads. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I remember the time that Sahib Hastings and I shared a yacht in Norfolk oh, no. for a week. <laughs> Hastings concerned himself with the careful <coughs> decisions of skippering a yacht, whilst I was referred to as Crewman Young, and uh, was made to be his cabin boy. <laughs> it wasn't all the manual labour. In fact, Hastings was such an excellent skipper in sk skippering our yacht, looking after it, that he managed to change our boat's name from the Wood Sorrel to the Wood Sorrel. <laughs> Which is how I felt after I fell in the river whilst tidying the ropes. <laughs> Why is it that whenever Hastings loses control, I end up getting wet? Thank you.